Hey golfers, Tony at My Golf Spy here. Last week we asked you to send us some questions, whatever questions you might have, whether it was about our most wanted testing, some of the new releases right now, or just anything else you wanted to know about golf gear in general. So uh, we're going to tackle some of those today. As far as the questions on most wanted go, I'm going to answer one of those briefly, but we're going to hold off on most of that and let the guys at the test facility shoot a video and really step you through the process. Along the same lines, we got a bunch of questions on the golf ball, which I would love to answer. Some of them in detail, some of, some of them my opinion on how you should find the right golf ball for your game. But again, that's a lot for, for this video, so we're going to handle those separately as well. So that being said, let's hop into what I actually will answer today. One question we get a lot is, how do I become a My Golf Spy tester? The short answer is you need to live close to Yorktown, Virginia. Uh, our facility is located in Yorktown. We have an indoor putting green as well as two indoor hitting bays with Foresight GC Quad launch monitors. We basically have everything we need in order to conduct our club test. Uh, another way you can test for us is if you happen to live near Saratoga Springs, New York. Uh, that's where I am. We have a secondary facility at McGregor Links Country Club, also equipped with a GC Quad launch monitor. Uh, we do some experimental stuff up here, and we also get to do some kind of cool one-off tests. For example, we did our low spin shaft test here, and we also did our women's driver test, which was just a ton of fun. Finally, uh, if you haven't done so already, you should register for the My Golf Spy Forum and start taking part in the discussion. Uh, once we get into spring, our forum coordinators are going to be starting to spin up all of our forum reviews, so we're going to... I'm not sure how many we'll do, we'll probably a couple dozen like we did last year, so we'll have opportunities to test a variety of equipment from things like launch monitors all the way to golf clubs. So in those cases, all we ask you to do is give an honest review if you're selected for the test, and uh, the gear is yours to keep. So that's, that's probably the easiest way to become a tester. So like I said, if you haven't done so already, join the My Golf Spy Forum. Something that came up a lot in your questions was basically, why don't you test last year's most wanted winners with the new stuff? And in fact, in, in a lot of cases, it wasn't so much a question as a, you should test last year's driver. Yeah, w we probably should, truthfully. Uh, we're not doing it this year. The reality is we ended up with more drivers than we had anticipated in the test. And I mean, that's a fantastic problem to have. It means that we can put more of the equipment in front of you guys. In a normal season, we get 22 to 24 drivers. That's generally been the average over the years. This year we have 28. Uh, in addition to the number of drivers, we've increased the number of testers from 30 to 35. So something as simple as adding another driver to the mix puts another 500 to 600 shots in play. Well, that's not a massive number as we try and streamline things so that we can get our results to you sooner. Uh, and we're certainly not gonna cut corners to do that. So um, we have to look at other ways to limit and that means you know, occasionally leaving out a club. In this case, last year's driver. I think next year we'll be in a better position to include that stuff. We've got a question about twist face drivers. Specifically, can you test the new TaylorMade M3, M4s indoors? Uh, absolutely we can. As with any other driver, um, twist face, it's just a, a different take on bulge and roll. At the end of the day, it's still producing a launch angle, a spin rate, some ball speed, and some axis tilt slash curvature, whatever you want to call it. Whether you're indoors on a, on a foresight or outdoors on a track man, that is absolutely going to show up in the data. So sure, we, we definitely can and will test twist face indoors. We got a question about the pros and cons of shortening your driver. Now this is a test we did, I want to say five or six years ago. It was really one of the first My Golf Spy Labs articles we ever did. Uh, we looked at drivers that had uh, shafts of 43.75 and 45.75. We chose 45.75 because at the time that was about the average length of a driver on the market. So what we found was that golfers with the shorter shaft tended to see on average higher ball speeds with the shorter shaft because they were hitting the ball in the center of the face more often. And as a side benefit of that, they were actually hitting more fairways as well. The trade-off is when you cut that length off your driver, it gets lighter. And so to maintain swing weight, you need to put more weight back into the head. Again, trade-offs, that extra weight should boost your MOI a little bit, but it raises the total weight of the driver. And so, you know, that may not be ideal for you either. The other thing to keep in mind is that it's not a universal truth that shorter is better. For some golfers, we actually saw better results with a longer shaft. Um, obviously height is a consideration. The other thing there is we found that golfers with flatter swings tend to maintain distance better with the longer shaft. So that's something to think about. We had a question about grip size, specifically how do I find the right grip size? Uh, this one is super easy. Uh, a lot of the stuff around the right grip size goes back to the old ball flight laws and the idea that if your grip was too big you'd fan it out to the right. If it was too narrow you'd hook the ball. 
most of that stuff's been disproven. In fact, a, a golf company recently did a study where they looked at different grip sizes and tried to correlate it to performance, and they found absolutely nothing that would show up on a launch monitor. So, so essentially what I would say is if a grip feels good to you, it's the right grip. It's, it really is that simple. Got a question about one length irons and whether another big OEM would join Cobra in the one length market. Uh, as you probably know, Edel Golf as well as uh, Tom Wishon Sterling brand both offer one length irons as well. But from the big guys right now, it's just Cobra. And I think that's how it's going to stay for a while. Um, Ping, I know, looked at it or I should say at least acquired some Nike patents for single length irons. But again, I don't anticipate anything new at this point. I think more than any other club, the success of one length iron is tied to the success of Bryson DeChambeau on tour. Now it's true that last year about 60% of Cobra sales were one length irons, but that was when kind of it was brand new, a lot of new interest in it. My gut is that that is kind of leveled off. So unless Bryson really has a breakout year, uh, which is certainly possible, I believe he's going to be an excellent player and I think he's going to win a lot. Uh, but unless that happens, I don't see any manufacturer really feeling the pressure to compete with Cobra. I think they're going to let them have that space for now. Reader asks why we don't include subjective data in our most wanted tests. Um, once upon a time, in the early days of my golf spy testing, we surveyed our testers and asked them to rate look, sound, feel, etc. And what we found was absolutely no correlation to performance. And you know, it wasn't like a universal agreement by any stretch where everybody hated a driver or everybody loved it. But the bigger issue was we'd have a situation where a, a, a tester would say, I hate this driver, it's ugly, it's loud, it doesn't feel good, et cetera, et cetera. And we'd go back and we'd look at the data and the numbers were outstanding. So in one case, we had a driver where the one tester rated it as the absolute worst ever in two years of testing with us. So this was the worst driver I've hit. And we went back and looked at the data and it suggested it was the best driver it ever hit. So without that correlation, it's kind of tough to justify. Now I know people would like to see it and would like more insight on what we think about clubs. And we're gonna look at ways to integrate that, but we really want to be all about the data as much as we can. At least for now, we're not going to do that. But again, we'll look at ways to kind of integrate that and see where it takes us. Somebody asked if the G400 Max was released because the G400 didn't sell particularly well. Uh, no, no, that is not what happened. In fact, the G400 was actually uh, this fall and this winter, wherever you want to draw that line, the G400 was actually the second biggest selling driver on the market behind only the Epic, as you might imagine. So G400 Max is kind of a unique thing. They brought it out to be super high MOI. And again, nothing else like it in its class with the exception of a PXG LX, which is close, but not quite. So a um, little bit different driver for Ping. And really, if we're being brutally honest, there's a market reality that once you get into, you know, January, February, March, uh, Ping has to compete with TaylorMade, Callaway, Cobra, all have new models on the market, so it's important that they also have something new for the consumer. Reader asked about clubs for slow swing speeds. Uh, yes, there are several. I mean, the Zexio brand is basically built for slower swing speed players. Uh, Callaway's Starline, Cleveland is doing a lot of stuff in that space, Cobra's F-Max. Um, so there are options. Nooth, the high heat, is another one I should probably throw in there. Really, when we talk about clubs designed for slower swing speed, the biggest factor is weight. So you're taking a little weight out of the head, you're, you're using a lighter shaft, and it's all about helping you guys generate more speed and ideally get the ball in the air a little bit easier. So, you know, lots of guys doing that, and it's something we're going to be taking more of a look at, I think, as we go here. Got a question about the Mizuno ST and GT Metalwoods drivers. Specifically, can Mizuno with those models eat into Callaway and TaylorMade's market share? Uh, look, I love Mizuno. Fantastic irons in particular. They've done some great stuff in the metalwood space over the years that perhaps they haven't gotten credit for. Uh, they've also made some mistakes, some stuff that wasn't that great. But at the end of the day, look, this is a market that thrives on brand awareness and, you know, to a degree, brand washing. So, no, no, even if, even if the ST and GT are absolutely fantastic drivers, um, I don't think you're going to see much of a difference from a market share perspective for Mizuno. Sorry. Sad but true. Somebody asked about the new Foresight Essential Putting Analysis and how we would use that for most wanted testing. Short answer, I don't know. We are just starting to look at it right now. It's really cool. Some really neat functionality. It's giving, obviously, data we've never had before. Um, for those that have asked about how it compares to SAM and Quintic, 
Short answer, I don't know. I'm not too familiar with those systems, but from what I've seen, it suggests that the, the foresight isn't to the Quintech level yet. I think someday it could be and very likely will be. It's so kind of what's going on right now, just to give you some background. Foresight is getting input from guys like us, so we, we're constantly telling Foresight what we would like to see in the launch monitor software as far as new capabilities. They're talking to R&D teams, as you can imagine. They're talking to instructors, and they're talking to fitters. So they're getting input from everybody on what people want to see integrated in the launch monitors and then making the decision as to what makes the most sense for the most people. So um, I can't be sure what the roadmap looks like, but it's encouraging, and I think eventually we are going to be able to integrate some of that data. So those are the big questions. What I want to do with this last couple of minutes here is just burn through some really quick yes or no type questions and then we'll wrap it up. So uh, somebody asked, will Zexio be in most wanted testing? Yes, it is this year. Is there a new iron coming from Ben Hogan? Yes, there is. Do I know what it is? Not positive. No, we should know soon enough. Uh, do we have plans to test the snowball? Yes, the new snowballs will be tested. We had a question about CT and COR and whether or not it's possible for golf manufacturers to get more distance inside the USGA rules. Yes, it is, and we'll get back to that in another video. New Kirkland ball. Is there a new Kirkland ball? Is there a new Kirkland ball in the USGA list specifically? Yes, there is. There was one last year that was added that never made it to retail. There's another ball on the list, uh, new within the last two months, I think. Uh, my sources at Costco tell me it is not yet in the system, but I think this one will be. It is a four-piece ball, I should add, as well. I think this will be the replacement for the legendary Kasich. So that is it for now. Our first question and answer video, it definitely won't be the last. So subscribe. Thank you for watching, and get back to us and let us know what we need to answer for you.